Maybe this is just how we kick it off. Episode 136, just talking about all things League's Cup today. Obviously, the penalties was a, uh, an exciting feature of the League's Cup, and we ended up coming out on top, which is great. Jovan, I think, has a bit of a moment there where he just does something that I think many of us wouldn't expect out of him. And then, obviously, Barraza was gifted this tournament via Cushing, and he has shown up and done his best free suppression. Yeah, I mean, I've seen so little of Jovan doing anything good that I was under the impression that he was a right-footed player. So props to him. Obviously, it's tough to, to not really do anything for a long time and be in a stressful moment like that. Circling all the way back to the reason we were even in pens, probably like top six most boring games we've ever seen. For us to be the team that we think we are, to be drawing that team mm -hmm. at home, and that's the product that we put out there. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, I mean, we, I wanted to potentially ask Pep, like, do you really pay attention to, to some of the sister clubs or do you, you're just in a different world? I'm happy I didn't. Well, with the, with the question that we asked him, and we can run it really quick, you've spent some time at NYCFC's training ground the last few days. Uh, could you just speak a little bit about how you view the growth and development of the league over the past few years and what you think about the level of competition? Uh, you know better than me. Yeah. <laughs> because you are here. Yeah. You know, I can imagine the impact from Messi coming and... Uh, and... Uh, yeah. I think the stadium is more, more people and hopefully, you know, America, you know, we can have a, a good league will be important for all around the world, not just for the USA. So, but uh, always a pleasure to come here and to see the stadiums today in this baseball stadium. So, <laughs> uh, how nice it is, you know, you breathe mm. history. Uh, yeah, uh, happy to no injuries and a good performance. We just heard Pep say he does not, at least to NYCFC, he is paying no attention. I like, thought, and not just NYCFC, but the MLS as a league in general, he he is uninterested with what's going on in America, at least at the moment. Do you want to do the brag, or do you want me to do the brag for you? Well, you can do it. Yeah, I, I'll it's a little more humble it. that way. I'll bask in it. He, I mean, he, his words, Pep Guardiola, Gord, oh Jesus, I mean, Sergio Busquets, oh, <laughs> the butchering of names. Pep crowned Adam more knowledgeable on MLS as a whole than him, the second best coach of all time. And I think as a proxy, that, that means our podcast knows MLS ball better than the greatest coach to ever live. To ever live. What do you mean number two? I surely don't. <laughs> I think you meant number two, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the pass. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure you meant number two. Yeah. But yeah, I was honestly, if we could pivot a little bit away from that snooze fest, obviously we were at the Man City AC Milan game on the Saturday before League's Cup. Some of, I, it's hard to say, I'm biased. I already don't like Manchester City mm -hmm. as it is, but then to like be the human beings that were on the end of their treatment. Pep was very much aware that he was the most powerful human being in the <laughs> building. I mean, he is. And that. he was using, he definitely used that fact and I think to say whatever the f he wanted. You, you did call it out on the night that he was probably a bit upset, like, it doesn't matter that it's the second preseason game in a in a obscure to him country against a, a team that he hardly ever plays or ever will play, and taking the L regardless of all of that. Like I think it still definitely bothers him mentally. Um, and you called it out. He's probably going to be a little bit upset before he even gets in this presser room because of what happened on the field. There are obviously chances for them to pull it back, and there were some good performances from some of the young kids. But yeah, once he got in there, he was clearly a little bit upset about the game, but then very upset as people started throwing the questions to him about schedule congestion. Yeah, and he was just like, "Well, I'm just gonna go full heel on FIFA yeah. and tell them that they're killing my, literally killing my players." He literally said that. <laughs> he said, "They're going to die <laughs> if I don't <laughs> and, care for them. They will die." But it, it was entertaining. <laughs> then throw in the MLS. I didn't realize that I would have to ask the first question. I, I thought we had signed up for a list of questions. And you would be third. And I was third. And then, like, Pep came in the room and his his media correspondent Threw was like, the window. nobody, he didn't even find out that that list ever existed. He just came in and he said, who wants to talk? And I was like, 
It's like, go, not yeah. like go, yeah. ask the question. So I just threw that, threw that at Pep immediately. Um, but I found it entertaining. I obviously love Pep. I think he's the greatest coach to ever live. Yeah. I it mean, was... he probably could have killed somebody on the podium and he'd be like, <laughs> no, he deserved it. Yeah, I could. He could. And um, a once in a lifetime, maybe, experience. I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths again in the future. Yeah. But super cool opportunity just to, to get to do that. I wish we could ask Holland or Grealish a question. Yeah, I was going to say the two other highlights would be Grealish lying to us. About... <laughs> well, he had an opportunity to win your heart potentially it would have to, it remain to be seen but justin has a way of if a, if another man has a face to face conversation with him that you could probably sell him on whatever Kool-Aid you're pitching <laughs> no nah, like I'm... and jack jack walked by and another reporter tried to ask him a question he said i'm going to come back or i'll spin back around and answer questions yeah and then 2 hours later press time was over jack had never come back and then the next day we find out he ghosted us for rihanna which fair which is fair but it's still fair. it does hurt a bit yeah i mean i've always been a jack Grealish, the guy <laughs> guy like the jack like Grealish character the man the yeah. character yeah as a player since joining man city not been a fan i was a big aston Villa Grealish fan uh, but then he aired united and went on to <laughs> to be the stinker on the bench of a great team. That's where he's rotting away now. <laughs> and now he's airing good fans. Airing the likes of us. <laughs> airing good fans to be with Pulisic and Rihanna. Yeah. Which, um, fair play. And then Holland. I may do the same thing if I was him. Aired by Grealish and Holland in the same night. Um, Holland obviously walked by and stated that he had done media the day before, so he will not be doing it again. Mm -hmm. So... And Nobody outside of Ederson really stopped. Right. And that's what I mean when I say they carry themselves a bit differently and they have the, uh, the uh, allure or the whatever you want, the ability to kind of pick and choose what it is they do and they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Because Holland, I mean, he walks into Yankee Stadium and he can get 80,000, or not 80,000. I 46. slipped up to 46,000 cheering for him. And then you go to the mall the next day and he's in Cologne ads in Sephora. Yep. So he's that guy. So it's a missed opportunity to talk to him for sure. But yeah, I mean, going back to the game, which is the point of this podcast. Yeah, the, yeah, the New York City game. It's weird to say <laughs> that I actually think as the competition gets higher in terms of the teams that we're playing, I think that we, as a team, we're going to play better. You've said it many times. I believe we actually play down to opponents a lot of times. Oh, yeah. It's this weird New York City thing. I don't know if it's the Jets infecting us or what it is but we we tend to play down to opponents i think that's what we saw ultimately kind of got to chalk it up to uh, a lot of differences in the in the 11 as well that's what i was going to bring up is how much do you think the lineup played a role because i think everybody's first assumption when we had saw the lineup come through and we made a joke about it in a tweet that nick was also boycotting the league's cup rolling out definitely less than ideal lineup yeah. uh, but then after the fact he he actually defended himself by saying that I guess Santi was sick, Hanes was having just some back stress that he was not interested in rolling him out with, um, and then Keaton had a hamstring that was bothering him. So that is three people that would have otherwise been on the field that would have gotten rid of having to play Julian, yep. which some would say was tough, having to play Hack, which is probably tougher than Keaton at least Damn. from what we've seen from him lately. And uh, I'm shocked Damn. that in a game that was going like that game was, the hack didn't end up with a yellow. That's like out of this world, I think, Damn. in the first half. I'm not sure we played more than five consecutive minutes of football without a foul. Um, so, hey, he kept it tidy. At least he kept it tidy. But, yeah, I guess how much do you think the lineup affected that, us playing down uh, to them? A lot. Definitely a lot. I mean... You have a bunch of guys out there. I mean, Moonsef, was that his first start in yeah. some time? At least a few games. It's, it's tough. It's tough to go out there as a, as a new unit. But at the same time, you train together all the time in your position. You have to play well. Hack probably should have scored mm. um, in that moment that, that ball goes to him across. He, I think he like stepped on the ball or something. Just an absolute me at pickup move. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I think literally happened 
Tuesday. But yeah, I mean, the the lineup. But at the same time, there was Barraza, who was first time playing in a year. It's been a long time. A year? Because it was around League's Cup time last year that he lost his job. Yeah. And so he comes in, obviously, has a huge game, had some saves, had some saves in the penalties, which... I don't know, has a little bit less excitement attached to it because it doesn't get you three points. It only gets you one extra one. Mm-hmm. But getting out of there with two points, like the announcers were saying, is significantly better than, than nothing. So, um, you know, it's kind of a situation where we kind of just got to take what, what we got. Yeah, we're in a much better shape than some teams, teams like the Red Bulls, who have somehow, honestly, I... Honestly, don't know how it's possible that they've been eliminated at this point. Like, we've only played one game of football two days ago. Yeah, but if you get zero, it's like you're done. Yeah, and, and well, I believe they got zero from both of their games. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they played four days apart. So I think, once again, they proved if you put them in a, a win-or-go-home situation, they're going to be going home. They've been, Bags should stay packed. They've been going home for 30 years. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't have high hopes as a... As a Red fan, that uh, things are going to change anytime soon. Um, so New York obviously uh, is, has always been and will remain blue, yeah. um, especially when we're looking at the League's Cup here. We do have Cincinnati coming up at Cincinnati, which we talked about before is going to be a tough game. You would hope we can leave with at least a point, but I think, I think somebody, one of the two teams is going to decide it within the 90. I don't see us going to Penns with Cincy. And I know they're on a little bit of a rough patch, three losses coming into this. Um, but if we if we want to be the team that plays to our opponents, then we have to play up against these guys. Hopefully the guys that we named are feeling better because we've played since before this season. And I feel like it happens more in football where you can, once you've played an opponent, it's easier to game plan for them. And it's maybe not as relevant in soccer, but I feel like we can get we can get two, potentially three from Cincy if if we want to. I think with it being MLS opposition, it's much easier to game plan for. It's much easier to get up and ready for. And like you said, hopefully we get some of those guys back and we're able to string to, together a better lineup, um, one that's more comfortable with each other, and we're just able to go out and it, at least show good face. Nothing like the last game. That that was a rough watch. And it, it sucked too. They had the added layer of like, man, we invited our friends to like come watch that game with us. Like <laughs> Yeah. Tough. Very tough. Yeah. So since the upcoming, we're looking forward to that. And I think maybe the last thing worth talking about is the rumors from Fabrizio and Bogert talking about McFarlane signing a deal with Man City. I'm not sure at this point if it's been completed or if we're just on the edge of it but they're talking about it like it's basically done and I'm assuming it would be a situation where he gets signed and then he's instantly loaned back to us so he can just continue what he's been doing here I don't really see a need for him at City otherwise yeah so if we were to lose and it's weird because we've had episodes earlier in the season talking about how McFarlane is certainly not first team ready and we've amended that on a few occasions now because he has been, you know, Iron Man is, is strong words, but he, like without him, we genuinely wouldn't have had a left back to play soccer for the past month and a half. Yeah. So hopefully it's a situation where he can continue playing with us throughout the end of the season. Otherwise, Kevin O'Toole, we got to slap a bionic leg or something on you and, and figure it out. Well, if you're Man City and you're looking for McFarland for anything other than what you just said, which is to buy him, have your contract under under Man City and loan him directly back to us. I don't know what you're thinking. Like I, that that'd be such a bad move. And that's not to shit on McFarlane at all. Mm-hmm. I mean we saw firsthand the left the young left back that played in the Man City AC Milan game is miles and miles and miles ahead of where McFarlane is currently. Um, obviously it helps to have great other young players around you who are probably maybe better than some of the players that McFarland is playing with. But like I was telling Figs, it's, it's night and day. It's 
that kid would instantly come into our team and never give up that spot, mm -hmm. ever. And so McFarland has shown improvement from NYCFC two days to now, but there's still like massive leaps and bounds that he has to get to yeah. to be able to even really be considered for a starting position here, let alone on the roster of Manchester City. Yeah, yeah. I think the truth is, if Kevin O'Toole was healthy, that he McFarland is not starting no. over him. No. Um, just the progress that we've seen with Kevin at the beginning of the season and even into the middle parts of the season was was amazing. Like one of the only players that in the early moments actually started to show development under Cushing, mm -hmm. um, and that was something that we kind of latched onto at the time. Like, hey, there might be something worth exploring right. here or keeping an eye on. So. We'll see how it goes. If if he gets yanked from us, then I'm really not sure what we're gonna do. But I I, I think it's likely he just stays with. Even if you're CFG, I don't see pulling, you know, a piece at that is as important as McFarlane is to us away from one of your clubs. Um, to to like you said, basically do nothing at City. Like he right. he he provides no value to them. It would be kind of a overarching silly business decision 100%. from like the corporate. Overload, overlord guys at CFG. Yeah. Um, <laughs> left back, kind of free agent out there, Marco Alonso. He is out there. We keep dropping names. It is rumored that he's going back to Barcelona, though. So if that's on the table, it's, I mean, we're not even in the picture. <laughs> yeah. But if he's just a guy that wants to play soccer, mm -hmm. we got a spot. Yeah. I mean, we keep dropping names that are, uh, that would be impactful. For 100%. this team, we talked about James last week or the week before, maybe uh, Marco Alonso. I think a lot of fans are getting a bit antsy seeing the likes of the Giroud's and Griezmann and now Royce going to LA Galaxy yeah. and what we've the the successful circus that's been into Miami over the last year. I think a lot of fans on teams that don't have that kind of big name European guy yeah. are getting antsy. Like they want they want somebody and. I was praying Griezmann would make his way to New York with that Derrick Rose and Knicks connection, but yeah. I guess we don't have the, the pull that we wish we would. Or we just never... We might not care. We never reached out. Yeah. And I, I talked about during Copa the idea of bringing in James Rodriguez and kind of what that would do for the city, what the, how many people would come out to see him play mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Obviously, the, it's getting echoed a little bit more throughout the community, but that would, I mean, anything. I would literally, I'm not even kidding you, give, give like, put a lien on my bank account <laughs> for the rest of the time. I'll pay for it somehow. <laughs> I'll get extra jobs, bro. I don't even care. I'm so serious. Uh, I would I would pay serious money for that. Yeah. I mean, and he, I, he looked decent in Copa, too. 100%. Obviously, he took Columbia... Not that it was just him, but Colombia as a team looked great. Um, but he was a big part of that yeah. in getting them Took to, him to the final. Yeah, which is crazy. So who knows? I think if you're not South American, which James is checking that box, and Young, which unfortunately James does not check, then it's not very young. David Lee and Brad Sims don't have interest in you coming to the city. We had to write a petition. Yeah, because I think, I think we're just looking for players that can be flipped. Well, we just want, like, for us, as people who create, I mean, I don't know if you consider this content, but create <laughs> something. <laughs> we put things on tape yeah. for this club. We just want to see more butts in the seat, mm. simply. I mean, it's, it's just what we want. We want more eyeballs on the team. Go, for us going and seeing 45,000 people to go see Man City and AC Milan on a random Saturday in America, like that proves to us that there's people out there that will watch soccer. It's not a, it's not a soccer problem. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing problem and it's a name pulling problem. And like a, yeah, a name pulling problem is it leads into a performance on the field problem right. too like if you do bring in big names and they're going to have an effect on your table position and your success like you can see the the rise of lafc and they have 
all types of infighting within LA between LA Galaxy and LAFC because people jump ship yeah. because LAFC comes in and as uh, are as successful as they've been. And yeah, it puts people in seats. And I think that was like the common thought, like that was like the conversation starter in the press box for all of the media that was at the Man City game that is also regularly at the NYCFC game. Yeah. Like we, like the third tier is full. Like none of us can believe yeah. it. Like where have all these people just suddenly come from? And that was, yeah, that was the conversation. Even the press box was like, there's probably two to three times as many people. Yeah. People were saying they flew in from England for yeah. the game, which is just wild. So I think you're right. Obviously the big names draw endless amounts of, of heads into the stadium. Yeah, and I think it was kind of a fold on the marketing department and our, for the club. Like it was a fold on their end to not get our players somewhat involved in that and yeah. get our players in front of 45,000 people, get a, get the brand of NYCFC. They had, yeah, they had Yankees players out there swapping jerseys and stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know how you don't have Santi, who is yeah. probably the new face, or make it make it Maxi if you have to. He's he's a lovable character as well. Just to do so, Or like a, maybe a fan fest yeah. out something. Or even get one part of the what would normally be the third rails area, the sort, supporter section. Get like a third of that with our fans there, with the TIFO, like something, do do something, hand out flyers or have a free giveaway to the, tomorrow's game, so anything. Oh yeah, in the stadium, they should have yeah. gave away like, I mean, so at, at the League's Cup, we weren't there, but I think there were like 16,000 people and that's tickets sold. That's not even butts and seats at, right. at the League's Cup. So we're probably looking closer 10 to 12,000 in the stadium. Like yeah. there's no reason that you can't give away like literally a thousand tickets. To, it wouldn't it wouldn't make a dent. Yeah, like and and like you can pre-screen it if you want, like make sure they're they're New York fans or they're they reside in New York. It's easier for them to get to the game and they're like a part of your target audience. And like make them sign up for like your email list or something. Yeah. And there's Anything. no reason and then you pack the stadium out and even if you convert a hundred people, like that's better than zero. So I don't know. I saw supporters, season ticket holders, were upset because there was like no relationship at all for this event and our club. Like mm -hmm. tickets were never offered, even at like a discounted rate because yep. you're a, a season ticket holder. And part of that too is probably a, the venue isn't truly ours. Like we're a tenant as much as Man City was. Yeah, right. So I think a lot of this stuff will probably be ironed out and make more sense once we have our own home. Yeah, but you just want to, to me, it isn't like the stadium comes and now we're going to start trying. Yeah. The point is to, by the time of the stadium, be able to pack out 25,000 seats. Yeah. That's the pl that should be the point, the plan. And things like not having NYCFC involved at all, like you said, swapping jerseys, signing balls, have a coin flip where Maxi goes out there, it, like literally anything. Mm -hmm. Um Show Maxi on the big screen, introducing <laughs> the play. Like, literally, give I mean, the team a box or something. That the, you, know, you could just buy a box to it. Like yeah. we obviously don't own the stadium or the boxes, so but buy a box and have the players there and right. get them all up on the jumbotron. And I don't know. Or even for the League's Cup game, like you said, there was a ton of those premium VIP seats just completely empty. I mean, like, the whole why stadium can't, there. Why were. can't Holland or Grealish or whatever be there? I mean, I. It's possible that they were traveling to the I next think, game. I think they went to Orlando like immediately. Immediately. I mean, that's fair, but like because I saw Grelish anybody. hanging out with uh, Shrek and Donkey, <laughs> and uh, that's what he was doing instead of <laughs> answering our stupid question. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, all these ideas. Over. I mean, we did just give them away for free, so that is not helpful for us. Treat but if you would like us to assist at all with the marketing plans, just take our ideas. Treat that as our application. Yeah, and we've sent a ton of ideas over, and it feels we, like some it, may be finally coming to life. Yeah. And, and I mean, at this point, our words about any kind of media game on this podcast, I don't blame you if you think one they there, don't man. matter at all, because we have said it a handful of times, but the conversations have been rekindled. There's fire. There's life. There's smoke where there's... No, there's fire. There's fire where there's smoke. I believe is you might have what smoked. they say. I believe that's what they say. Okay. There's, there's, there's smoke where there's fire. Where there's smoke, there's I mean, fire. The, isn't that what, that's like the fantasy fantasy footballers thing? <laughs> I can't even speak anymore. Wow. 
I can't even do it. We'll probably wrap it up with that one then. Uh, yeah. Look forward to Cincinnati and possibly Manchester United on a just uh, <laughs> on a win. On a win. Yeah. So we will see you guys after Cincy. Check us out anywhere that you get a podcast. If you're watching us on video, first, I'm sorry. I. <laughs> it's so humid in here. It's so hot. We have no type <laughs> of, uh, what do they call it, climate control? No, it's so bad. I mean, we have like, what would be the opposite of control? Like, we have climate chaos in this building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about ready to, to buy like a $500 <laughs> Facebook marketplace van <laughs> and just do it in there. Yeah. Because uh, this is crazy. Yeah. It's... So yeah. But anywhere that you get a podcast that you can listen to one, you can listen to us there. Preferably, I'll be honest, preferably Spotify or Apple. Yeah. If you can listen to us there, that would be great. If you are seeing our video, we've always been told that we have a face for radio and a voice for YouTube. That's what uncles are for. That's what to tell you for. those types of things. Yeah, and they they kind of uh, they kind of predicted it. So they be speak. They, they speak. <clears throat> yeah, subscribe, drop a comment, and uh, follow us on Twitter X, where you, you kind of join the conversation. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs> uh.